getting excited because I said, oh, a bitch is going back. A bitch is going back to the Fox Theater in motherfucking Detroit. When I tell you Detroit, y'all don't understand what the fuck I had to go through to stand in front of you beautiful motherfuckers tonight. Y'all don't understand the fuck a bitch had to go through to stand in front of y'all tonight. Y'all don't understand I was afraid to walk the fuck up out of here, but I said I can't let the people down a motherfucking Detroit because the promoters are dirty as a motherfucker. the environment I worked in comedically. I only work where I want to work and who I want to work for. I want to work with. I don't work I, I, because that is a very precious place for me. I, I've been offered uh, a gig, uh, a couple of gigs, uh, three or four gigs uh, 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 to work with Monique in LA, in Brooklyn, in uh, Houston. And I turned them down because I just, I, I didn't think it would work. Um, so uh, after talking to a lot of people, one of the very people in this room about how things are different. Uh, two of the very people in this room, as a matter of fact, and how things are different and look at, you know, how things are coming around. I decided it would be wrong for me not to give somebody a chance based on things that they'd never done to me. That would have been wrong to me. And, and when she talks, and she goes on her diatribe and she talks about me having my feet under her table. That was at her invitation. Uh, I, I was doing a gig in Greenbelt, Maryland. She lived in Baltimore. She was having a fight party. It was... Uh, I think Evander Holyfield and Mike Tyson. And sure enough, I came to her table at her invitation. It was a wonderful time. As a matter of fact, it was based on that interaction, along with talking to people, I decided that I would do these things. I decided I would do it. And now I know what Tyler Perry knows. I know what Lee Daniels knows. I know what Oprah knows. I know what Steve Harvey knows. I know what Charlamagne the God knows. I know what Netflix knows. Saying yes to Monique is an occupational hazard. Now, we go to, uh, we're playing a gig in uh, Detroit this weekend. Um, I, 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 I know I'm going on at 9.45. I leave the hotel. I get there around 9. Monique had just gotten there. She was supposed to be there, uh, there at 8.40. She had just gotten there, gone at 8.40. She got there at 8.38. What Monique was trying to do was to slow walk the show. She didn't get, end up getting on for 30 minutes. The oldest trick in the world is, if I want to change the order and I don't have merit, I'll try to make people wait so long that everybody gets nervous and go, please, just, just go on so we, we can avoid a conflict. That didn't happen when Monique got on stage. Monique actually felt like she had merit. She would have done one of three things. Either she would have took it up with the promoter, and she did, and the promoter said, we're going on, and whether you're going or not, that's a different thing. You would have not done it, but she knew she had to get on stage, or she would have been breach of contract, or she would have come to talk to me. She didn't ever, and, I, and I, I emphatically emphasize this, she never once talked to me. I, I haven't seen Monique in years. I didn't see her at the venue before, after, or during. I haven't spoken or seen Monique. So if you really thought that you had a, a legitimate contract dispute, you would have come to me and said, hey, I have this contract and you have this contract. Notice not one thing on that contract, not one person she has on that contract, not one thing happened. Do you know why? Because it wasn't legitimate. And she goes on stage. And she proceeds 
to eviscerate me. Not just me, but Steve Harvey. Uh, the, the sexual was my, my wife, my dog later on in subsequent conversation. Let me ask you something. What did any of that have to do with an alleged contract dispute? What did Steve Harvey have to do with your contract? What did I have to do with your contract? What did my dog have to do with your contract? What does my wife have to do with your contract? You wrote your contract, you and your daddy. You, 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 you proceeded to say things that were so patently insulting that, that it, 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 it was galling. It was galling. You, 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 you ask in subsequent conversations why I have a dog, a support dog. What kind of person has a support dog? I have that dog because my father died my children and family decided they would get a dog from where he was from, and I named the dog after my father. I don't have a dog to keep people away from me. I have a dog, so I have my father with me all the time. That is an act of love which you know very little about. You proceeded to assault my sexuality. You had the temerity to assault someone's sexuality, a man's sexuality, given who you lay next to. None of that had anything to do with alleged contact track dispute. You could have taken that up with a lawyer. You would have gotten out, you could have not gotten going on stage, but you knew you didn't have a valid contract. And you do what you always have done. You tried to weaponize black femininity. You tried to turn that audience against me. You tried to burn everything down. Like you do all the time. Who calls Netflix and thinks I can get $10 million because I did the Queens of Comedy? Who thinks you can get on stage and still live off that? I was a king of comedy. You never hear me talking about it because in this business, like any other, it isn't what you have done, it's what you do. That, that show was one I signed on to do. I made the quintessential mistake, the horrible mistake that like Tyler Perry, like Lee Daniels, like Oprah, like all these people of saying yes to you. And it is an occupational hazard. It is my fault. I have learned my lesson. You didn't just, and the thing that bothers me the most isn't the things that you said, because I know who I am and I know what I do. And I have a pristine reputation. Everybody who knows me know what, I, what, I'm, what I'm about. It's this whole, my dear, my babies, I love you for real, which is so transparently false, it is ridiculous. But the thing that, that was really the most annoying, the thing that was really the most bothersome is after a, a, a terrible couple of weeks where people were being slain in Buffalo, where people were being slain, kids were getting slain in school, and people had come to a comedy show to get away from all of their problems, you besieged them with yours. The one contract that isn't in dispute is the one that the audience had with us to entertain them. But every single time, more and more, you spend half of your time talking about your grievances and what you didn't get and who did this to you. Listen, when you burn things up and you sit back to watch the results of them, she's literally set that stage on fire, said the most incendiary things ever, and I had to go on stage. She has a temerity to call me a coward. A coward would have left. A coward would have said, I can't go. You didn't even want to go on when you had a, a contract that you knew that not to be true. You made up this whole narrative that you knew not to be true. Earlier today, we did a post and we did a post with D.L. Hughley having a conversation about how his daughter was violated from a really good friend of his. And at the time, he didn't say anything because he didn't want to jeopardize that relationship with a really good friend and he didn't believe his daughter. We posted that. And then we left the caption under that pretty much saying, if that black man couldn't put any protection around his own daughter, we know we have nothing coming. Now, once we posted that, the reason why I said, Daddy, can we go do a live? Because I was reading the comments on the timeline. And most of them are from black women. And they're saying some, Monique, what does this have to do with your contract? What does this have to do? You're going too far. What does this have to do with your contract? Let me tell you what it has to do with my contract. Not a damn thing. Not a damn thing. It has nothing at all to do with my contract. What it has to do with is the character of the man named D.L. Hughley. That's what this has to do with. And let me acknowledge D.L. Hughley did apologize. He said he apologized. And y'all are saying, Monique, he owned his mistake. Let me say this to you. Though he owned it, it does not erase the trauma. And when we talk about the character of the individual, 
for years. For years, D.L. Hughley has given his commentary and his opinion on other people's lives, not just mine, for years. And he would give the ins and outs. Hold on. We sorry, baby, because, okay, they just must have thought we met just for a second. But hold on, he can raise shut it down. Stop it. Please. Thank you, sugar. We're just getting it taken care of, my babies. Please forgive us for a second. And again, like I said, tag as many as you can because this is a conversation, in my humble opinion, in my humble opinion, that our community needs to hear and wrap our minds around because we're getting caught up in the fluff, y'all. We're getting caught up in the fluff of shit. And we're not trying to deal with the facts of shit. We getting, we getting distracted. So when y'all are saying to me, Monique, this is so immature. Monique, this is so wrong. I'll take that. I'll take that. Because when I'm watching our community fall apart at a rapid race, because we too afraid to have the real conversations, and y'all keep saying, let's do it privately, because we too afraid to look embarrassed in front of who? In front of who? And we watching us. So for the ones that say, oh, Monique, you could handle this differently, this my swing at the back. This my swing. This my swing. This is our swing at that back. So we're going to take our swing. Thank you, baby. No worries. So let me get back to what I was saying. When you start addressing the character of the man, when you really look into what is happening, when a man says, I was not strong enough to defend my daughter against a really, really good friend of mine because I didn't want to jeopardize the friendship, though he apologized, you have to ask yourself, what kind of demons is that man dealing with that he couldn't stand up to the predator of his child? Of his child. But that same man goes on his radio show and talks about people as if he was sitting in the meetings, as if he was making their life decisions, as if his opinion mattered in their choices. So let's just get into what really happened. In Detroit, where Monique went on stage and dogged D.L. Hughley as a replacement set for no having jokes. If you talented and you got jokes, you gonna prioritize your talent over all of the bullshit. You can go ham after. Yeah. But when you ain't got no jokes, when you've been booed, see, that was the time when Monique was able to get away with the fat jokes and the dick jokes. That's all she ever did. Shit, I motherfucker, he don't know. If I shit on him, he gonna be like, <laughs> <laughs> that yak yak buffoonery ass shit. Oh my God. It got a TV show, and motherfucker don't even understand it. Monique. For the movie Pressure. But look at the movie Pressure. That's what they give niggas awards for. Buffoonery. The worst mom in cinemographic history. Monique. And I'm not talking shit because I'm some hater. I'm talking shit because this bitch disrespects everybody. Everybody get it from her. Everybody. I was so mad when she did that shit to Charlemagne, and now here it is. All, all, between all the people, people always talking about, I see the burnt bridges with this motherfucker, burnt bridges with that motherfucker. Um, look, ain't none of us perfect in the comedy game, but I'm not finna motherfucker spend my time on stage making excuses for not being funny by talking about somebody else. 